All right, so medical oxygen shortages have persisted throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, and many hospitals globally are now building their own oxygen plants within their hospitals. Um, I was reading where, and this came in June, and it says, in preparation for a possible third wave of coronavirus, several private hospitals in India, in Delhi, um, have begun installing their own oxygen generation um, plants in order to avoid a repeat of the city's oxygen crisis during the second wave. Uh -huh. um, so speaking with us this morning is head of the Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care at UAE, Dr. Kelvin Metalor. Uh, Dr. Kelvin, morning, sir. Welcome to morning. Smile Jamaica. It's morning time. Great to have you with us this morning. How are you, sir? I am good, thanks. Morning, Neville. Morning, Dahlia. Thank uh, you for, for inviting me. It's our pleasure. First thing, Dr. Kelvin, you need oxygen in the hospital for many, many different things, right? That's absolutely correct. Oxygen is a molecule of life. You need oxygen, not only in the hospital, but everywhere. Yeah, but so it's critical. Yeah, but in hospital, you would need it for the kids, you'll need it for um, surgeries, you need it for everything. So this is not just about COVID, is it? No, no, not at all. Yeah. Oxygen is needed every day in the hospital to maintain life. Without oxygen, you cannot run a hospital, not yeah. possible. How do you produce oxygen? I mean, I know it's in the air, I know that, but I suspect it's not that easy. How do you produce oxygen for, for, the, for exactly what we're talking about? Thank you, um, Neville. There are so many ways you can produce oxygen. Currently, oxygen um, currently um, in Jamaica is manufactured um, at a particular plant as a sole producer, and then it is transported to the various um, areas where it is needed. So it's an uh, industrial production of um, medical grade oxygen, and then the oxygen is transported to where it is needed. But that's not the only way oxygen is produced. Um, there are so many other ways that oxygen is produced. Um, you, I uh, think I heard you speak earlier on about um, what, are, what is known as the PSA technology, which is um, the, the, the pressure sieve adsorption technology um, that is used to produce oxygen at the site of its use. That's another way you can produce oxygen and a lot of hospitals, a lot of centers are moving in that direction. Um, there is also a very small you know, production that is done with oxygen concentrators, um, which um, quite a few persons have at home where you can have a, your own um, home oxygen production, albeit at a very low flow rate, relatively low flow rate, but at least sufficient to meet some of your basic needs, at least can get you out of trouble. So um, during this particular pandemic, quite a few people bought their own concentrators and they use them at home. Yeah. So there are so many ways oxygen can be produced. Yeah, um, you know, but I think the pandemic's kind of exposed the, 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 the disparity in accessing oxygen um, in various countries. Doc, there is Dio Gracias Agaba, he's a senior communications officer with PATH in Uganda. And he's saying one of the things about scaling oxygen production is it requires a lot of investment, it, it requires dedication of resources, significant time and money. Um, are we in a position? in Jamaica to be able to do something like that? Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, this conversation, unfortunately, um, just took a turn that which we, we probably could have avoided if we had planned a little better and if we had projected a little better. Um, this is not a new conversation about in-house oxygen production. Um, we've had those conversations quite a few other times. Um, but of course, like you know, many times um, it's sometimes difficult to get the attentions of um, necessary, you know, powers unless you're in a crisis situation. Um, often, they, as they would say, you do not prepare for war in the time of war. You prepare for war in days of peace. And so the same thing applies to things like oxygen. Um, you have to look at it because you just can't do it overnight at the time of a crisis like what we've just had and look at options of producing oxygen or scaling up oxygen when you are already at maximum production. If you wanna put such a thing in place, you have to do it at a point in time when things are quiet so that you, know, you plan for problem. It's just like hurricane, we are used to hurricane. Uh, you don't plan for hurricane when it's at your doorstep. You make all those plans and preparation way before, otherwise you will be caught pants down and uh, it becomes a problem. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Metalor, I accept what you said, but we are in the midst of it now and we need oxygen now. So what can be done now? Uh, there are lots of things that can be done now. There are things that are being done now. Unfortunately, I mean, it takes you a minimum of six weeks if you're actually going to put in what is known as the PSA. I mean, what you just read earlier on 
speaks to what happened in India. The experience in India actually um, taught a lot of um, places, uh, a lot of lessons where they practically ran out of oxygen and, um, and a lot of people unfortunately succumbed to, to, to the pandemic, the disease condition as a result of the lack of oxygen at a particular point in time. And that mandated, the, or the Supreme Court of India mandated every hospital in India that, that had a bed capacity in excess of 100 to have an in-house oxygen plant. And if you have intensive care, you know, you, you, it, it was scaled based on how strategically located and important that particular hospital is for you to be able to do that. So in the middle of this pandemic, what can we do? At this particular point in time, what we are doing is to use as much conservation strategies as possible. Um, and that means reducing the need for um, the use of oxygen in other areas where previously we would have used oxygen. A classic example, for example, we, we, we basically stopped elective surgeries. So that would mean that um, every, all the resources, especially oxygen, was directed towards managing COVID patients. And so people who normally would have come in for other surgical procedures, you know, people who had fractures or people who had, you know, fibroids or people, even people who had um, heart conditions and needed heart surgery, we could not provide those services during this time because the oxygen was diverted to managing um, COVID patients or severe COVID patients in the critical care units and in the um, COVID wards because there was not enough oxygen to go around. So we basically have used all kinds of conservation strategies to ensure that we don't run out of oxygen completely and put everybody at risk. And so we are just um, scaling down just emergencies and to very urgent cases. Um, so we've just looked for all sorts of conservation strategies to stretch the oxygen as much as possible to, 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 to make sure it goes around until, you know, the production could increase or the Im um, imported oxygen could come in. Yeah. When we say oxygen plants and hospitals, um, you, you used India as an example of hospitals that have over 100 beds. Here in Jamaica, Doc, we have to face reality. Some of our hospitals really just barely pass in a clinic description. So if we do try to put them in, we're looking at basically where? Chest Hospital, Cornwall, and, and the UWI? That's correct. We have to look at strategic planning. Um, we don't necessarily have to import wholesale what is done in other areas. We have to look at our home situation and strategically plan how to meet our own needs. We can modify strategies to meet our own needs here in Jamaica. And, um, and so we, uh, we basically can look at the major hospitals that use most of the oxygen um the by far the the bigger hospitals of course um use most of the oxygen uh, we do have a, a health structure system that allows for uh, a referral system for you to be able to tier your system in such a way that you can you can you can refer to the major centers and so even if we begin with the major centers to say you know we need a backup system to to be installed in the major centers in the larger hospitals what are often referred to as the type a hospitals or some of the bigger type b hospitals at least that would have been a, a starting point. And the type C hospitals can refer patients there. And um, also because some centers will have the capacity to, 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 to make their own oxygen and to, and, and to have in-house production, then um, whatever is being produced at the um, various plants that currently supply the entire um, island will be sufficient to meet the need of everyone. So we are not all running through the same the same pathway. Okay, final question, Dr. Metalor. I know we got a shipment on Monday. Where are we right now? Do we still need oxygen? Are we hanging on? Can you do the elective surgeries now or no? Um, a lot of places have not resumed elective surgery. I know that there was a Ministry of Health mandate that all hospitals should switch to emergency and urgent cases. Um, so most hospitals, that mandate, there has not been a review of that mandate, mandate yet. And so um, elective surgeries are not going on in most of the hospitals, at least the public hospitals in Jamaica at this point in time. Um, the oxygen situation has improved. Um, there's been oxygen delivered to most, if not all hospitals. Um, just enough at a time. It's the challenge with this is that 
is not just the delivery, but also the storage capacity of the hospitals to be able to, 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 to store oxygen for a long period of time. Oxygen currently is very, very expensive to produce. The, the, the production is very expensive using this current technology that we have. And then you need to transport it from one section of the island to the other. Yeah, so think, for example, from Kingston to Savlama, that's mm. quite some distance. And, and, and so, and, and then your storage system, if you store too much, if you have liquid oxygen and you store too much of liquid oxygen, then evaporation takes place and you lose a lot of money from that. Um, you store oxygen in cylinders, you cannot use up all the oxygen in the cylinders. So you're returning empty um, cylinders that are not completely empty, but the pressure is not enough to release the oxygen. So there's a lot of things that we need to look at so that we can maximize and improve on currently the system that we have. It's absolutely not good enough and it has been demonstrated during the pandemic that we need to um, shift the paradigm and we need to review what we currently have in place. Stay safe, sir. Thanks for speaking with us this morning. God bless you. Thank you very much. Dr. Kelvin Metalor, head of the Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care at the University Hospital of the West Indies.